Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we have asked of him. Lord, thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, thank you for today, oh heavenly Father. Lord, you did not allow us to see the day, but you did it anyway. We say thank you for being Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you, Lord, for being so kind to us. Lord, we thank you for providing for us, heavenly Father. Lord, everything that is good that has been done unto us, it is because of you. And we say thank you, heavenly Father. So Lord, even right now, Lord, we just want to say we give you all of the glory. Lord, we give you all of the praise. Lord, we give you all of the thanks. Because you are good on every part. You've always been good to us. And we say thank you this morning, every part. Lord, most of all, we say thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. For you sent to God for our sins. And if it wasn't for your obedience on the cross, Lord, we wouldn't even be here tonight. So we say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being so wonderful to us. We just ask, Lord, that you would continue to keep us, Lord, that you would continue to guide us. Help us in this all our Heavenly Father. Lord, that one day we will see you and it's going to all said and done. So bless us, O Heavenly Father. Continue to remember us, O Lord, in all the things that we do. Bless us, O Lord, to be the servants and soldiers that you need us to be. Lord, to go out into this dying world to tell men, women, boy, and girl about the gift of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we say thank you this morning. Thank you for all that you have done. And now continue to be with us, Lord. We give these things back and bring to you soon.
the God we serve has delivered us, has picked us up, turned us around, and placed our feet on solid ground. He saved me. If the songwriter was not right, the songwriter was not theologically correct when he said that he was good enough for God to save him. I want to tell you this morning, I was not good enough, and he still saved me. The songwriter was theologically incorrect when he said that God thought enough of me to save me. It's because of who we were not that God saved us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for Jesus in the midst of our sins. While we were messed up, He kept us. He cleansed us. He saved us. Yeah, He delivered us. I'm telling you today, it doesn't matter how cute you are. It doesn't matter how holy you are. You were not good enough for God to save you. But he has truly picked us up. And he saved us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 3 and 23 that we all have sinned. We all have fallen short. And we all have missed God's glory. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 5 and 8, while we were yet in the thick of our sins, God saved us. He blessed us. God thought enough of us to give his only beats out of son. Just us. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Well, I thank you for reminding us that we ought to be glad. I said we ought to be glad that God has saved us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The God we serve is such an awesome and such an amazing God. He, he took time out. You know, we said we take time out of our busy schedule. In the midst of God's busy schedule, because he's omnipotent, he still does everything for everybody in a mighty way. He has blessed us one more time to get together and thank him, praise him for saving us. Thank God for who he is and what God has all in I'm here today to, to present a friend of mine who, who came recommended from a friend of mine. And it's just good to know somebody who knows somebody. And so I want you to put your hands together and join me today to welcome to the stage our friend, gospel recording art, artist, Brother Charles Miller.
my brother another hand. Thank God for his gift. Amen. Since I don't have a gift, I'm bringing somebody with the gift. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much for, for joining us here today. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for, for sharing with us. Uh, we needed a church. And, and we thank you. We, we thank you so much. Let me call your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We'll be looking at verses 22 through 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 in the New Testament, verses 22 and 23. I'm going to start right in the middle of the sentence for those of you who are a major English Spanish study. Yes. I'm going to start in the middle of the sentence. Verses 22 and 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. <clears throat> to the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. Yeah. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Yes, right. Now this I do for the gospel's sake that I may be partaker of it with you. I want to talk about everything to everyone. Everything to everyone. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. And as we're in this season of evangelism, we find ourselves looking for new methods to reach souls for Jesus Christ. We find ourselves looking for a way to reach those whom the church has determined to be unreachable. And as we look to reach people for Jesus Christ, we must be well aware that we have to become as some are. If we are rich and they are poor, the Apostle Paul teaches that we must become as poor. If we're on a high standard and they are on a low standard, the Apostle Paul says that we must become as they are. When we find ourselves looking to reach the unreached world, we must carry ourselves as we are seeking God, and we must carry ourselves in a way where we can reach them. I oftentimes talk about the fact that when I hug young people, if they're really short, I get down on their level, look them really in their eye, so I won't appear such a big fella to them. That young people can see that I really love them and really care for them, regardless of their stature. The Apostle Paul, in his writing in chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians, he first of all creates a pattern before those who are listening. He talks about who he is, the degrees he has, and he ministers to the church about how they ought to treat the preacher. No amen there. Amen, amen. He says, and he says this by asking questions. The Apostle Paul asks the question, am I not an apostle? And he gives a distinct definition of who and what it takes to be an apostle. He asks the question, am I not an apostle? Did I not see Jesus? Did I not see Jesus in an untimely season? 
Am I not an apostle? We've gone over and over and over again at the New Beginning Church and we realize that the apostle is one who has walked physically in the presence of Jesus, has seen Jesus for himself. And as Paul tells his testimony, the apostle Paul says that I was on the road to Damascus. I was about killing Christians. My whole life was dedicated to taking out those who believed in Jesus Christ. My whole life was about making sure that people who honored Jesus Christ would no longer honor them before. And as I was on my way to Damascus, what is now known as the Damascus Road, Jesus got my attention. The Bible says that 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 Paul was knocked from his beast. The Bible says that Paul was struck blind. The Bible says that Jesus asked Paul, why are you persecuting me? He goes on to say that I saw Jesus. Now there is no one in the room, there is no one living can testify that they've seen Jesus. There's no person. The apostle John in Revelation saw him. Paul said, I saw him out of due season. Just the other day, a group of preachers got together and a guy introduced himself as pastor. Another guy introduced himself as bishop. Another guy introduced himself as a preacher. And then a, another guy introduced himself as apostle. Yes, sir. Well, the preacher said to him, man, you should look good for your age. <laughs> he said to the apostle, man, you look real good for my age. He said, oh, man, I'm just 62, I'm just 68 or whatever he was. He's, he said, no, man, because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, because you are an apostle, you're at least 2,000 years old. The Apostle Paul supports that principle this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 when he says that I'm an apostle that saw him out of due season. He goes on to deal with what the church should see in the men of God. The Apostle Paul says that, that is it not necessary that I bring a supporting wife with me? In other words, should not the church support the preacher by giving him a, a contribution as the preacher moves from place to place to represent the church. And the Apostle Paul goes on to say, not only should I be compensated by the, the gospel itself, because as I preach the gospel, the gospel ought to be what I get paid for. Him. He goes on to say that if I have a wife, that my wife ought to be compensated along with me. He didn't say if the wife was, a, was one who's speaking or not, but he asked the question, am I, am, am I not able to carry with me a supportive wife? And then he says, don't worry about it. If you don't feel that you should give to the preacher, uh -huh. don't worry about it. It's okay. He says, I have the right to have myself compensated from the ministry, but I have not used that right. So he denies his right in the first pericope of chapter 9, 1 Corinthians. He says, I have the right to, to make sure that you pay me well, but the fact is, don't worry about it. When we look at Philippians chapter 3, when we look at Philippians, and, and we quote this scripture all the time, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, is somebody's favorite scripture. I can do everything. Yes, sir. I can do all things by Christ Jesus. What the Apostle Paul is saying is that one church supported me. Another church chose not to support me. And he says, if you choose not to support me, don't worry about it. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Yes, sir. And then he goes on, beginning at verse number 8, he talks about we ought not to bundle the ox that treads out the corn. He says that because the oxen treads out the corn, he ought to eat from the corn 
he produces. He ought to eat from the corn. You ought not muzzle him. In other words, if he gives you grain, then he ought to be able to eat the grain. Still talking about the preacher. He says in verse number nine, nevertheless, I have not used any of these rights. I endure all things. And he says, I don't present the gospel for payment. He says, I don't do what I do just to get paid. He says, whatever you bless me with, I'm good with it. Yes, sir. He goes on to, to say to us today, for if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast about. For the necessity is laid unto me. The boss Paul says that it is necessary that I preach the gospel. The Apostle Paul finds himself at a point like Jeremiah did. Jeremiah got tired. Jeremiah got sleepy. Jeremiah got contentious. Jeremiah got to a point where he said, go on home. I ain't going to say nothing to him anymore. <laughs> Jeremiah says that my preaching days are over because I'm not seeing the fruit from my preaching that I would love to preach. The Apostle Paul says like Jeremiah, I'm through with it. Jeremiah says, I'm going to refuse to preach. But when Jeremiah got to the house, he sat down and he contemplated over it. And he understood it's like fire shut up in my bones. Yes, he says, he says, I can't be quiet. I got to tell somebody about this Jesus that I serve. I got to tell somebody about the God who keeps me. And that's how we ought to preach. That's how we ought to sing. That's how we ought to minister. That's how we ought to usher. Because we can't help ourselves. Yes, sir. Whenever you see somebody that can sit down and let things go on and go on and you can see that folk need your help, you're not called to that ministry. When you're called to it, you can't help yourself. Yes, sir. When you see somebody uh, walking around, when you see somebody need your help, you can't fold your hands and say, no, I'm not going to do it. It is the Christian's responsibility. As you walk the campus, as you look at the yard, you see paper. You don't say, we have somebody to do that, do you? Mm -hmm. You say, I'm going to work together. Yes, sir. I'm going to serve the Lord for I'm doing it for the sake of the Lord. Yes. Back home in Mississippi, we used to have oxen, cows. And we would always take a seasoned cow. And yoke him up with a, a young cow. And they would pull the load together. Yes, sir. It's because they, they would have determined that if they put one with the other, then one will support the other. When the old cow gets tired, then the young cow can say, we can do it. When the young cow doesn't know the ropes and doesn't know how it ought to be done, the old cow said, no, don't turn right here. Let's make a wide turn and we come back down and get this one later. Yes, sir. Such it is in the church, we ought to get to a point where we help each other. We walk with each other. We support each other. When you cry, I cry. Yes, sir. When you bless, I'm blessed. We have to get past this thing because you blessed and the Lord didn't bless me. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate on you. I am not going to support you. We got to support everybody. Our children need our support now like never before. They go through some things that we've never gone through. They have some issues that we've never had. There are some things that have come up in the midst of all that they go through that we never even thought about. They need our support. We can't wipe our hands free of them. We cannot move away from them. We cannot shut them down. They need our support. And let me tell you, children don't even know what they need. Yes, sir. Too many parents have gotten to a point where children can tell you, I don't want to go today. I don't want to do this today. I don't want to help this today. Children don't know what they need. They need your support and they need it now. Matter of fact, they need your discipline now. They need your help now. They need your, your firmness now. Because if we leave them alone, then they be wearing white uniforms or checkered uniforms or striped uniforms before we know it. A child left alone is a pipeline for prison. A child left alone is a pipeline for death. 
A child left alone will come up and disrespect their parents and disrespect season saints. We need to understand that we cannot leave them alone. Apostle Paul said, I got to continue to preach this gospel. I have to continue to, to tread out the corn. I, I have to continue to make sure that I am at a point in my life where I am looking forward to helping somebody else's child. Even though my child is not at that point, I need to make sure that I help somebody else's child. We have to pour ourselves into somebody. We have to pour ourselves into some something, some godly thing. We must become servants. That's what the Apostle Paul says in 19. He says, he says in verse number 19 that we need to become servants to all men. He says, for though I am free, I'm free from all men. I have myself I have made myself a servant to all. In other words, I don't need to be served right now, but I'm going to become a servant to other people. I'm going to work hard to make sure you make it. I'm going to expend my time making sure that you can make it. I am going to make sure that you can make it because if you make it, I can make it. Time out for people saying stuff like, Everybody ain't able. <laughs> Let me just serve you know that that's not a compliment. Yes, sir. You're right, everybody's not able. Only those who walk rightly before God is able. Only go those who love the Lord is able. Only those who sacrifice for the Lord is able. God is able to pour out more blessings than we can make. God is able to bless us in the midst of all that goes on around us. God is able to bless us in the midst of our sacrifices. Yes, we ought to sacrifice for others. We ought to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. One of the worst prayers you can pray is God bless my. God bless my. And every time we get together, you pray and God bless my. Don't you understand that God wants you to pray for other people? God wants you to reach out and touch other people. God wants you to be reminded of people that's going through things as you go through things. Let me tell you, as you're going through something, you must still serve others. That's right. Preacher says, preacher says the other day, God blesses you more while you're on your way than he does before you get started. All right. You may not have the money to go to school. I didn't have money to go to school either. You may not have all the tools to, to make it where you want to go. I didn't have those tools either. Growing up as a boy, I would stutter every time I tried to speak, but I put time into it. I stood in the mirror and I looked at myself and tried to work on changing myself. And every time I stuttered, I would walk and I would look at myself and I would read everything on the wall. Even today, the stuttering tries to show up. But let me tell you, you need to sacrifice for you because no one else can sacrifice for you. Don't talk about, well, my dad is not on the scene. Everybody got a daddy, whether he's on the scene or not. And God fixes it because God says that I will be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. Sometimes, sometimes when dad and mama ain't on the scene, it's a blessing. Let me say that again. Sometimes when they're not on the scene, it's a blessing because they could lead you the wrong way and they can lead you into the wrong thing. But God has a way of putting somebody in your path that will bless you regardless of where you come from. Yes, sir. I wasn't supposed to make it. They had counted me out. But the old deacons back home, they would spend time with me. At home, daddy would spend time with me. They taught me how to be a man, and they didn't teach us how to be soft men. Yes, sir. Taught us how to be firm, stern. They taught us how to have integrity. They, they taught us how to be men who would say what they mean and mean what they say. Yeah. In the midst of all you go through, in the midst of your issues, don't get so focused on what you are going through. Other people are going through things too. Paul says that you must become a servant to all. What if I would just shut the door and say, oh, boy, it's me. I'm having a tough day. I'm having a bad time. And I'm going to focus just on my little world. 
God is unctioning us. God is moving us. Paul says that I am a free person. I'm free to go where I want to go, do what I want to do. I, I'm able to accomplish what I want to accomplish. But you have to reach behind you and bring somebody along with you. Every person in this room, including Pastor Miller, is standing on somebody else's show. Life for us has not always been this way. People marched for us. People stood for us. People went to jail for us. People were killed for us. We are standing on somebody else's shoulder, but they did not refuse to keep on working. First of all, you need to be serving. Regardless of where you are, regardless of what, what phase of life you're in, you need to serve. My aunties are older than I am, and sometimes they used to whoop me. But when I got a taste of Jesus, I was able to tell them what good things ought to be and what godly things ought to be. They said, well, we're not taking mama, their mother, my grandmother. We're not taking her to church because she's in a wheelchair. I said, well, people ought to go to church in a wheelchair. As a matter of fact, mama ought to serve from that wheelchair. Yes. They said, well, how's she going to serve? She can't walk. She can't do the things she used to do. How, they gonna, how is she going to serve? Well, I said to them, set her at the front door of the church. Put a stack of programs in her hand. And as people come through the door, allow her to pass out the programs and give the program. Because God is looking forward to you serving regardless of what you're going through. One of, one of the greatest pictures, one of the greatest pictures that I, I greatly admire, they show this big mega church and it's empty. It's a, it's a mega, mega church, it's empty, and, and the people had left the building, and church was over, but there was a man in a wheelchair. He had a vacuum cleaner. And he played the music over the sound system. He had a vacuum cleaner, and he would roll that chair, and he would roll that vacuum cleaner. And he would not stop until the whole building over... 30,000 feet was clean because he was rolling the vacuum cleaner. We have folk that got good legs. Folk with plenty of sense, they say. And people with strong back and strong arms, and they are not doing anything for the Lord. The Apostle Paul said, I am free, but I'm here to serve. You have to, you have to be free, and you have to serve. Matter of fact, we are free. But first of all, let's stop at the word free. We are free. We're not in bondage. We are free. We got things going on around us, but we're free. Thank you, Lord. We have people who are in church because the, there are no armed guards outside. That says you can't go in. We are free to, and we can choose any church you want to go to. We can choose any location we want. We can even hear who we want to hear. During COVID, seven preachers every Sunday was in our house. During COVID, I mean, Sister Davis had wiped me off the calendar. I wasn't even on the agenda on the Sunday. I guess she got real holy during COVID. Watch out. I wasn't even, brother, Lord, I wasn't even on the agenda. I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get an extra bite of the meal. I couldn't get an extra drink. Now look, I, I served it. Now I'm going to church. Seven preachers every Sunday. Because we in America are free to do these things. We, we have luxuries. But when I look at other countries, mm -hmm. we over in Czech Republic, I'm up preaching my interpreter and interpreting, and now we having a good time. I'm in the middle of my mojo, and you know you have to make sure your interpreter says what you said. I'm in the middle of my mojo. I'm getting down. I'm calling people to get to know Jesus. And all of a sudden, my interpreter stopped interpreting, whistling my ear and said, we have to stop now. There were two men walked in with camouflage uniforms on. And the moment they walked in, that's what they, their police officers wear. The moment they walked in, all 2,000 people shut down church. I said, look, okay, what else you got to say? You got to stop now. So then the police officers said, well, is that anybody car parked out there? And then after he cleared it, that, that there, there's nobody in this room that's illegally parked, he walks out the door and the interpreter said, you can continue to have church now. 
Well, when I looked at it, because I'm free, I'm an American, I, I, I see things differently. I was like, now how in the world did he think the folk in here was illegally parked when everybody in here ride bicycles to church? <laughs> Can't you see Sister Henry coming down 59 on bicycle? <laughs> Trying to get to church. All 15 miles. I mean, she's coming to church. 2,000 people, Sister Hughes, came to church on bicycles because they understood how important giving to church was to them. Amen, amen. They understood how important getting to hear the word from the Lord was to them. The Apostle Paul says, I'm here to serve. Yeah. Yes, sir. And because you're here to serve, you're able to serve in any conditions. We go where we want to go. We do what we want to do. We hang out with who we want to hang out with. And then when we get tired of hanging out with them, we get somebody else. All right. See you. Don't want to be you. Give me 50 feet. I'm out of here. Go on home about your business. Matter of fact, I can do better without you. Matter of fact, you was just holding me down. We can do that in America. Yes, sir. In other countries, daddy, choose your Wife, daddy, choose your husband. Daddy, tell you where you can't go. Tell you who you can't hang out with. I mean, we couldn't sit in here with multicultural people if we were in other countries. And we got it good. I want to tell you, we got it good. Regardless of who the president, the governor, the mayor is, regardless of who the superintendent is, we have it good. We have it good. We, we have it good. This morning I walked outside, I did whatever I needed to do in the car, I got back, went in, back in the car, and nobody drove up and said, give me that car, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. We need to understand that God has positioned us where we are for the purpose of service. Amen. The next thing the Apostle Paul says, watch your attitude. He says, be anxious to serve. The next thing he says, he says, watch your attitude. Look at what he says. He says in, in, in verse, verse 19, he talks about serving. Then verse 20, he says, and unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. He says, unto a Jew, I became as a Jew, so I can win Jews. Watch your attitude toward your culture. Watch your attitude toward other folks' culture. Don't look down on people. Watch your attitude. Don't think you better than other people are. God has blessed you to be who you are. God has blessed you and positioned you where you are. Watch your attitude toward other cultures. He says, I had to become as a Jew in order to reach the Jews. We're talking about winning souls for Christ. We're talking about delivering the gospel message. And you don't have to be a preacher to deliver the gospel message. We have to evangelize even those in other cultures. That's why Jesus says to his disciples, there is need that we go through Samaria. Because they weren't used to going through Samaria. They weren't used to dealing with half-breeds. They weren't used to having, having fun or, or ministering to people that didn't look like them. That didn't have the same culture. Jesus says there is need for us to go through Samaria. He gets in Samaria. At a, at a place called Sychar. At Jacob's well. And a woman is there that has some issue with me. I know y'all are holy. But this woman had issues with me. Brother Carter. She had had five of them. And she was on the sixth one. And Jesus says to her, Sister Carter, well, the, the one you got at home ain't yours either. He says, this woman had issues. So Jesus went through Sychar, sat at Jacob well, talked to this woman, because God had already lined it out. He did not worry about culture. He did not worry about whether she was male or female. My next point is, watch your attitude toward gender. Watch your attitude toward gender. Because that woman had no business talking to Jesus in public like that. 
But because Jesus showed up at Jacob's well, because Jesus showed up there, he was able to tell her, the men that you've been dealing with, you, you, you shouldn't have been dealing with, and the one you got at home, you shouldn't be with him either. And Jesus told her all about herself. And then she left that well on fire for Jesus, said to Ralph, Ralph, I thought you were doing something good, but come see a man. Said to Joe, Joe, you thought you had it going on, but come see a man. He said, Paul, I, you thought you were going through it, doing amazing things, but come see a man. The Bible says she went back and told the men how great things Jesus had done. Amen. So you need to make sure that you're aware of who you're dealing with. When people need you, you have to make sure that you come down off your high horse to deal with them. Paul says, even with dealing with the law, he said, when, when I dealt with those who, who, who had the law, what I did was I addressed them according to the law. Yes. I act like I was of the law. I supported them in the law. He says, it's better to reach people through a small, still voice, through a right attitude than it is with making sure that you're pious. It's not important for people to know how important you are. It's more important for people to know how much you love them. How much time you're willing to spend with them. It's important for people to be reached by you. And if they're going to be reached by you, you need to understand that you have to put yourself on their level. Even with their language. You have to make sure when you deal with them in a different language, you begin to learn the culture. Brother Galvan, Brother Malo, and the rest of the brothers are, are, are teaching me about this Latino culture. They're teaching, they're teaching me how this culture is different. They are teaching me how, how to address certain Latinos. They're teaching me when to say Hispanic, when to say Mexican, when to, when to say Latinos. Because some of the same things we get upset about, they get upset about. So I'm learning how to, to handle my language. The Bible says, Jesus says, that we ought to make sure we reach other people for Christ. The Apostle Paul backs this thought up. He says, those who are in the law, I became as one in the law. The next thing he says, those who were not of the law, those who were without the law, I became without the law. When you look at the text, he's saying that I'm coming down off my horse. I'm humbling myself and bringing myself down to other people. That's why we at the New Beginning Church have such great, great reputation of welcoming visitors. I want to make sure that when a visitor visit, I want to make sure I call them and ask them, how was your experience at the New Beginning Church? And if they said the lady in the church with the white jacket on mistreated them, I'm going back and look at the tape and see who had the white jacket on. If they said when the usher ushered them in, they, they shuffled them in the seat, I'm going back and see who was standing on the floor that day. Because the New Beginning Church is known all over the world as a hospitable church. And I have to go back and apologize to them and tell them that was a one-off. And I have to guarantee them, I guarantee you it will never, ever, ever happen again. Because God... Is in this place. Because we honor God. So we want to make sure that we become all things to all people. Jesus says, those who look toward God, even those who are already Christians, Paul says we got to handle them a certain way. You know people have left churches. Some have left this church because somebody looked at them the wrong way. Because somebody said something. Because somebody rubbed them the wrong way that day. And don't mention that bald head preacher and how he preaches. Lady told me, I mean, I'm a brand new pastor again. In 2004, I was a brand new pastor. I didn't even have six months under my belt. 
So I'm trying to hug everybody. I'm, I'm trying to welcome all the visitors. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that everybody uh, get, gets a touch from me and everybody gets to talk to me. And, and every now and then, I miss somebody. Woman came to me that Monday morning. She couldn't wait. She called me. She said, look, my son is never going to visit that church ever again. I wanted to say, pray to the Lord, but I couldn't. <laughs> she, said, she said, my son and his wife was there, and you didn't even hug them. You didn't even greet them. I said, well, sister, I'm only one person, and people were thronging me. People were surrounding me, and everybody was coming to me. It's not because I need them to come to me, but those who recognized me as the pastor, they came to me, and I encouraged them. They walked out the door. I can't run your son down just to hug him. Who is quiet in this place? <laughs> and just to tell you, Sister Richard, some members best get other churches. What did I just say? I understand very well that, that I won't be able to be all things to them the way they want to be, want me to be, but I can be all things to them by my intentions. There's not a child that's going to be left behind. There's not a senior citizen that's going to be left behind. There's not a person that, if I can help it, that be left behind. Let me just share with you, young adults, you got to get in where you fit in. Somebody listening to me? In other words, I have to make sure the babies are in place. I have to make sure the singers are in place. And see, now Sister Hill is so glad she's a singer now. She just loves my attention. She even loves me now. We have to make sure that we put forth the effort to meet people where they are. If we're going to win souls for Christ, if we're going to grow the kingdom, if we're going to save souls, Paul says, I have come that I can win some. I have come that if they don't get one, it won't be because of how I treated them. So my point is, you have to treat people the way you want to be treated. Put yourself in their shoes. If they're uncomfortable, would you be uncomfortable? And finally, he says, I've come to the point in my life when they are weak. Then I need to be weak. Paul says, for those who are weak, I become as weak. For those who are struggling, I struggle with them. You see, the church is the only, the, the only organization that shoots their own wounded. Girl, get pregnant. Oh, did you hear that, girl? I ain't gossiping now, but did you hear that? Boy goes to jail. Girl, you know Annie Rue? Uh, Annie Mays, boy, went to jail last night. I mean, police cars was all down the road. But when you when it comes to dope dealers, they're on this each other's side. When, when it comes to prostitutes, they're supporting each other. When it comes to drunkards, they, they are swapping lies and sharing the same Bible. But when it comes to the church, we have to learn to edify the body of Christ. Boost everybody up. Let them know when they fail that you can still make it. And tell other folk, children, you can make it regardless of what you're going through. Because God is on your side, you can make it can make it. Make sure, make sure we become everything to everyone. Make sure we make the sacrifice that is needed. Jesus painted the picture. And the picture that Jesus painted was first of all one of service. Secondly, one of sacrifice. And then he secured us. He did it over 2,000 years ago. On a skull, a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus served us. Jesus secured us. Jesus made us who we are. He died on Calvary. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. They laid him in a barber tomb. But the good news is early that third day morning, he rose with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus is going to make another sacrifice. He's going to stop in midair at the trump of God, at the sound of the archangel. And he's going to call us on home. 
sitting on the right hand of the Father right now, making intercession for us. Jesus got up early that third day morning, tabernacled around here some 40 days, caught a cloud and got out of here. And when he comes back, he's coming back on a cloud. He's not coming back in a Lamborghini. He's not coming back in a, a, a Ferrari. He's coming back on a cloud. He's not coming back in a limousine. He's coming back on a cloud. How do people get caught up in who these fake Jesus are? How do they get caught up in these fake false prophets when Jesus has said, the same way I got out of here is the same way I'm coming back? At the trump of God, at the sound of the archangel, at the voice of the archangel, Jesus will crack the sky. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who remain will be caught up with him. And midair. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. And the Bible told me the other day to encourage one another with these words. Let's serve. Let's secure for somebody else. Let's make the sacrifice for somebody else. Jesus has set the example. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't, don't go home and get it right. You can't wait till you get it right. Come to Jesus. He'll help you get it right. The door is open. The door is open. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know Him. Trust in His story that Jesus died on Calvary. Jesus was buried in a bar of tomb, and he rose from the dead. He rose for you, and he rose for me. If you've never received him, would you bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. The door is open. Jesus is calling. Zion is calling. Calling us to a high place.
Hallelujah. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the almighty, the awesome, and the amazing God. And we're glad, we're glad he gave us a, one more chance. He's given, he's given us a, another chance, another opportunity. And we're just so glad that God has given us another opportunity. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Hallelujah. It's time to give. This is a joyous time to give to the Lord. Amen. This is a joyous time to give to the Lord. It's a joyous time to give unto Unto the Lord. Hallelujah. If you want to give by way of Zell, you can do so by the Zell code of lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. Zell is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to give by way of mail, you can mail your gift to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you for money. We thank you for increase. We thank you for income. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. And now bless us as we come to give unto you. Bless every giver and bless every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Now it's this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes and sacrificial gifts along with the offerings. Impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Jr., Billy Banks, 
Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Beverly Wallace, Omar Galvan, Ed Brandon and family, Joe and Marlene Studevant, Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, families recovering from, the nat from natural disasters, laborers for the harvest, protection in schools, and world peace. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for those who are listed. We pray for those who are not. We ask you, Father God, to give support, to heal, to strengthen, to deliver, Father God, as only you can. We ask you to bless us, Father God, as we pray for them. We pray, Father God, that they continue to get better, that you would give them their dreams, their hopes. And what, Lord, we ask you to comfort them in times like these. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. On yesterday, we were at ACC and the hydroponics and acupunics group that, that resides here at the New Beginning Church was present. I'm going to ask those to come, those who will come and, and give us a presentation concerning yesterday and, and explain to most of the people what acupunics and hydroponics is. Amen. Good morning. So basically what um, hydroponics is, it's like growing, um, um, basically, uh, it's, it's like, okay, you have hydroponics and you have aquaponics. So hydroponics is, um, So there are two ways you can grow plants. One, you have hydroponics. Hydroponics is using, uh, no, aquaponics, you are using fish waste to grow plants and then the plants also give carbon dioxide to the fish so the fish can breathe so it restarts every time. In aquaponics, you are growing plants without using soil. Uh, without using soil, the only thing you are using is water. And sun, aqu hydroponics is the outside version, and aquaponics is the inside version. And the best fish that you can use for your aquarium for aquaponics, you can use guppies and mollies like we have, or you can use guppies, mollies, goldfish, sword toes, rose, rose bora, uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, these these young people are members of the Riverbrook Church. Amen. And they are they are with us. We're with us every Sunday, and they're participating. I ask mom to stand up. And let us know who, who's rearing these children. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And they have a sister, an older and a younger sister, who's present. She's running around here, and when she walks back in, she gets a chance to speak. Amen. <laughs> thanks, Sister Hughes, for, for allowing these children and introducing these children to us. I want to thank Sister Marie Hughes. Amen. God is blessing us tremendously, and young people know what they're doing. Brother Miles, did you know what acupunics and hydroponics was? Brother Miles, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sister Katrina Whitlock. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Sister, Sister Denoe Davis. Oh, Brother Galvan. Oh, y'all smarter than they are. Give hands to these young people there. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much. I mean, Sister Davis has been talking about their prison presentation all day yesterday and all, all day today. She's been blown away over the presentation that they did at HCC, and they were surrounded by adults, which they were able to communicate what these things are. And they have a model right here in the doorway. Have they brought the model back yet, uh, Jacob? Is the model back here? It's still, so they have a model of the, the acupunics system right here outside. And uh, as you go to eat, just stop by and look at the model that they actually built themselves. 
So that's why we want to support young people as they move forward. Jayla, you want to come tell us about hydroponics and aquaponics or say hello to us and tell us what you did yesterday and they've already been up here. So we will make it. Aquaponics is where you can make uh, make plants and make fruit and vegetables without soil, but only using fish waste. <coughs> Hydroponics is the same thing, but only using water. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're just so proud of our young people. Let's give our young people another hand. Amen. It's going to be awesome and amazing God. Your books are in. Your books for sharing the gospel, good news on the go, they are here. If you ordered or pre-ordered your books, please come by the office and pick up your books. Amen. Whether you paid for them or not, we just trust God you're going to pay for them. Amen. So come by and, and support. And we have one of the contributing authors here in Deacon Willie Taylor. We'll ask him to come and say hello to us. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm glad to be here again. This is just like home to me. It's just like second home. Giving honor to God. Pastor Davis, Sister Davis, and the entire New Beginning family. You know, uh, your pastor is 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 somebody. <laughs> you know, he is somebody. Uh, this book, sharing the good news and on the go, and I like that word "go" because that's how the Great Commission that Jesus told us is to go and teach other nations. And I know Pastor Davis has a long history of evangelism and discipleship. And what I really like most about him is that he's not a selfish person because he could have wrote this whole book by himself. <laughs> but he allowed others to contribute. And that's the way Jesus was. He could have saved the world, but he used the disciples to help spread the word. So I'm really excited about On The Go. Now, my contribution to the book was uh, from the area of how theatrical arts can be used in evangelism and discipleship. How it can be used, whether it's stage play or spoken word, but it has a way that it can be used to help draw people to Christ. And so I'm excited about it. And what I want you to know, I know there are many different people who are authors of this book, but uh, a few months ago I was in uh, D.C. up in the Maryland area, and the book is already being talked about up there, you know. Amen. And so I see great things, not only for your pastor, but for this church, and I want you to know that I, as well as all the whole ministry, are lifting you up fervently because we see the future from New Beginning. Amen. And I'm so grateful and honored to have been a part of, of this. I know he got some big name people on the book. I'm, I'm just Willie. And when you ask me, I say, look, you know, all you're getting is Willie. You know, I can't be everybody else, but I certainly can be Willie. And he allowed me the opportunity. And I am so proud. And we'll be looking to help uh, get these books out and to the public because uh, there's something that people need to see and need to know. So I'm grateful. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your past and not only with me, but with the world because uh, he certainly is someone who is a giving person and the Bible says cast your bread on the waters and it's going to return back to you. And I truly believe that New Beginning is going to be magnificently blessed because of the unselfishness of your pastor and how he uh, inputs into other people's lives in the city as well as outside the city. So I'm excited about the book 
And I'm here to get mine. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. We have another contributing author in the room. That's Sister Carolyn Davis. Come and say hello to us and tell us her portion in the book. And then we will move forward. Is, is in the book is about music. You know that's what I'm about. And I talked about how you can reach youth for Christ through music. And I told of a little girl who used to go to Dyson Elementary School that would uh, throw temper tantrums when she was in the first grade. The teacher didn't know what to do with her. So the teacher brought her to me and she was going to keep her from coming to music, but the little girl loved music. So I promised the girl if you do what the teacher tells you to do, then I'll give you a pre-quarter at that particular time. You know, the, the children know what it is, a $2 instrument. That little girl straightened up, became, became a model student, all praises. And so when she left Dotson, when she graduated uh, from the fifth grade, sixth grade back at the, in the day, she asked if she could continue to play with the group. And that's how Turning Hearts Music Ensemble got started, because I started bringing children home and practicing on Friday nights in the house so she could be a part of the group. So that's it. that's what's in there. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. If you have not ordered your book, you can pick it up today. If you have ordered, you can pick it up today. Please see Sister Irvin, Sister Trey, or in my office, and you can pick it up today. We are celebrating March and April birthdays today. We're going to eat, y'all. Amen. We're going to eat. We're going to go right through this door, and we're going to eat. We're going to celebrate and see. We're going to eat what our Brother Miles cooked for for the month of the month of April, uh, March, right? We uh, see what he cooked, and I want everybody to get a, a judge's tag, whether 10 or 0. Amen. We're going to see what Brother Miles cooks for us. Amen. Amen. So these are the people for the birthdays, and, and we uh, we appreciate what God is doing in our lives and giving us another opportunity to live. Amen. Amen. I think that's it, and we are standing now to be dismissed. I want to thank uh, Pastor Pastor Charles Miller. He had another engagement. Music, musicians and singers always running. They don't schedule one one engagement. They schedule 10 a day. So he had another engagement. We appreciate him dropping by and celebrating Christ with us. Amen. Got the church. Let the church Say amen. amen. God, God has spoken. Yes, He has. Let the church. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, that we can be everything to everyone through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and giving us another chance to witness for you, to share Jesus Christ with you. Bless us, Father God, as we move throughout this world, that you will give us good news on the go, that we will share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that men, women, boys, and girls will get to know him in a very real way. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join in by saying, Amen. Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you.